with me Banjo Jen um, and I wanted to say a big welcome to all the new subscribers because there's been quite a lot of you this week uh, which is great and so I thought um, it would be a good time to say hi and to upload um, a new video and do something really fun um, and this train is bound for glory is definitely fun and that's what this is all about um, so if any of you are new to the channel um, I'm Banjo Jen, I'm a singer-songwriter from Sheffield in the UK and so my main focus is really kind of writing my own stuff and using the banjo as the kind of lead instrument to sing my songs uh, well, not for the banjo to sing my songs, for me to sing my songs but having the banjo as the kind of lead instrument and that's maybe a little bit unusual um, but because uh, I don't really play a lot of like old time tunes and a lot of the stuff that um, banjo players tend to be known for um, and so kind of starting a teaching channel is a little bit strange because I don't um, like I say play a lot of the things that maybe people particularly want to learn um, but what I wanted to do was just kind of do a little channel that's more about getting people started off and doing things for fun and getting all the basics down so that you can then branch out and you know find tunes that you want to play uh, maybe write your own songs too and do things like that um, but just to kind of get people confident and having fun with the instrument um, because I think when you're learning it can um, you know it can often be quite slow going and it can feel like you're forever trying to kind of follow tabs and try and kind of plonk out individual notes and things and I think you can get really bogged down with that if you're not careful um, so I uh, if you've not kind of seen any of the tutorials so far um, please feel free to kind of go back through the channel and start from scratch and um, particularly if you're a complete beginner um, they go right from the start so literally you know getting that frailing strum down um the basic chords and stuff um hammer-ons pull off slides etc um this tutorial i'm going to do today um assuming that you're already kind of at that stage and you've already gone through those kind of first uh, few stages so um it's not a complete beginner's tutorial i guess um but the lovely thing about frailing banjo claw hammer banjo is that it, you can make any tune or any song beginner or more advanced because as you get more confident you can start putting in all the fancy bits okay um, until then you can literally just play chords and that's what the beautiful thing about this style is so th this train is bound for glory um, plenty of versions you can look up out there to get a feel for it um, and then start to play it how you want to um, you can literally just play it with the chords okay we can go G this train is bound for glory this train this train is bound for glory up to the D this train this train G7 to the C dun, 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 dun. this train So if you want to just sing, you can just sing and do your basic frailing strum and you don't even have to do anything fancy and you've got a song. You can play a song all the way through. There's a million verses that you can look up. Everyone that you look up will have a different version of the words. I can never find uh, exact words to this so I'll make my own up as I go along. Um, but you know, just just do that for a while. This train is bound for glory. This train. Okay, that 
pressure chord structure and um, like I've said in a couple of the other tutorials once you know the chord structure of a song you can then build on it and you can put all the fancy stuff in that you want you can play around with it um, because you're always following that basic structure that's not going to change um, with all these old tunes you know it just rolls round and round and round forever like it's it, that's all it does verse chorus etc so once you know that cycle you can then start putting notes in um, so I like to slide up into that first uh, melody note so this strain and that's a fast slide okay so we've got different types of slides and um, sometimes that's on the second string first or third fret really nice one of the G slides now sometimes you might want to slide and emphasize both notes you start in note and your sort of destination note um, so that might be a da -da, da -da. so there's that kind of slide which we put in quite a lot but sometimes you want a quick slide so you're not emphasizing the first note you kind of slide in right up into your destination note as quick as you can and that's what I do a lot in this tune. So I'd go like this string, doing that like quick slide to begin with this string. And then if you go up to your first string on the second fret, it's going to give you that melody note that you want to go up to. So you could do it quite straight. This string is bound for glory, bound for glory, you know, da -da. or you can, you know, do it a bit more of a flourish by putting in um, like a, a bit of a faster hammer on that's slightly more syncopated so it might be this strain is bound which I think sounds nicer so that's what I do this strain is bound for and then I also put another little pull off in on the third string uh, second fret it's actually A back to your G so I'm hitting it as I fret it but then I'm pulling it off to get that G so I do a little pull off on the first string, pull off on the third string as well. Okay, so I'd go this string is bound glory. It just sounds really cool. You know, you can just do it on the notes, but putting those pull offs in gives you the little uh, nice bit of flavour. And then, uh, this string. I, I would put a slide in there as well. I put slides in quite a lot in this one just because it's fun. Um, so on your bass string, you know that you've got your second to your fifth, um, like we're doing Cripple Creek. Um, so those of you that have done the Cripple Creek tutorial, the second to the fifth um, slide is in there a lot on that first string. But anything that you can do on the first string, you can also do on the bass because it's, it's your other D. Okay, So you can go second up to fifth. So I might finish it with uh, with that kind of slide. I might go. Do, 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 do. Sounds pretty cool. And then you've got like a fill in little bar uh, where th there's kind of no words. If you were singing along, this strain is bound for a strain. So you could just go. Do, do. I was just literally hitting the second and third string there as you fill in, do, do, do. just with your basic frailing strum. Or you could put a groovy little slide in as a kind of fill in for that little G section. Um, so again, similar to Cripple Creek, um, if you remember the B part of Cripple Creek where we were going, do, 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 do. you can do that as a little kind of fill in in this and it sounds pretty cool. So that's on the third string, second to fourth, I'm going, I'm hitting it. And this is a slower slide, so I'm emphasising the first note and the destination note. Da, 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 da. And then I kind of go back to the second fret to strike it and pull it off. So it's like a do, 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 do. So I might kind of finish it off like that. Uh, in that um, thing nicely and if you're singing it's really nice to emphasize that because you don't want to do too much fancy stuff while you're singing um because it's going to clash with you know you, you want to hear you want to hear your voice doing the melody when you're singing um but those little fiddly bits in the middle can sound really cool where you've got that space so this string is bound for it, this string. and then repeat that bit this train is 
I'd probably do two pull-offs then on the first string. Because you're sort of staying up on that note, so it sounds quite nice to go. Then you're going to go to your D, this strain, and you can do your full D. Uh, well, it's not a full D, technically, I suppose. You can do your four-fingered full D, but we don't need to do that. I was talking about the three-fingered D. So you can go up to the three-fingered D, or you can do just the power D, the two-fingered D, without that ring finger. Um, I use both in this tune. I sometimes will do the full D, as in putting that first string down as well. I sometimes do the power D. The advantage of the power D is that this ring finger can come and do a pull-off. Okay, so... I might kind of use the two finger D to reach then my ring finger on that third string to do the occasional pull off, uh, a bit like in Lazy John if, uh, if you did that tutorial with me. Um, so anyway, we go up to the D and you can do what you want there. You could do a hammer on with that index finger on that third string as a little fill in. Uh, you could do the two finger D and do like a strum and then a little pull off on that third string fourth fret that little ring finger pull off and um, so we've got this strain is bound for glory this strain this strain is bound for glory this strain i might just do like a hammer on and keep it quite simple but like say or you could go bound for glory this strain do a ring finger pull off I'm going to give you a few options and then I want you to play around with it and come up with your own thing because uh, this is the joy of this uh, sort of thing that now you know what hammer-ons pull off slides etc do you can decide where you put them I don't want to say you've got to do this here you've got to do that there that's not what it's about at all and um, I just play what comes naturally and I want you to do that as well and what comes naturally to you might be quite different to me but I'm just giving you some options so you got your D there and then we're going to go back to the G, this train, and then it goes to the G7, it's bound for glory. Okay, so we know a G7, that first string fretted on the third fret, bound for glory. You could do a pull off, bound for glory. You know, it's it's up to you, you can, you can put an extra bit of fiddliness in there if you want to, but somewhere you want to make sure you're hitting that uh, G7, because it then takes you into the C which is where it's going to resolve there. So this train is bound for glory, ain't I'm riding. And I would hammer on into that C, do, 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 especially with that middle finger. Um, I use that hammer on a lot in C on that bass string. So when, you, when you're going to grab a C chord, I'll often hammer into it. Da, 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 da. Now, if you want to put in the C seventh, it sounds really cool. This tune kind of cries out for that seventh um, chord. It's a bit tricky though. It's not something I've covered yet in the tutorials, but if you're in a C, your normal kind of C shape, this uh, little finger is going to have to reach over and it's going to hit that third fret, uh, on third string on the third fret, all right? So that's a sort of C7. Now, that might be tricky if you've never done it, so you might have to practice that a little bit. It's quite hard to hold it down for long. Um, I find my, I have to keep my ring finger nail really short to make sure it doesn't push my finger off the fretboard, which is what it's doing a bit at the moment, because I've not got it short enough. Uh, should have... Uh, bitting them down before this tutorial um but anyway you're going to try and reach that ring uh, little finger sorry across to the third string third fret and so you're going to go um is bound for glory ain't no riding but the righteous and the holy so you can just do a strike strum thumb let it go strum thumb if you really want to get fancy, you can do that C seventh note, and then you could do a little pull off with your middle finger on the third string, again, same string, but on the second fret. So it would go little finger, middle finger, <laughs> little finger, middle finger. You can do that if you want to. Um, I would say as long as you're trying to get that C7th with your little finger in there, 
that's going to sound really cool. Um, so you've got a string that's bound for glory, and I'm riding by the righteous and the holy. And then you just finish it off going back to your G, this train, and I'm sliding up into it again, this train. Then you've got your quick D, is bound. And this time I will definitely do the two finger D, because I'd do that pull off with the ring finger on the third string, fourth fret. could finish it with the classic hammer on the bass or you could do the bass slide that we did the second to the fifth it's going to give you the same note so um, if you're hammering on the bass and then going up to the open third string which is an ending that I often use on a G line like that um, you can you can do either the hammer on and then up to the middle string open or you can hammer on you can hammer on and then slide it up to the fifth because either way it's going to give you the same note because obviously the fifth fret of your bass string gives you the same note as the open um, third string your G note okay so putting all that together I was going slide gives you a really nice sort of peppery um, version that you can work on and obviously as you speed that up you'll get the... it sounds really cool when you can get it going fast but just start really slow just kind of build it up slow um, and then start to add those little bits in then you can play around with it you know it might be i mean quite often i will from that d the first d that comes after the sort of uh, second line or whatever i'll then go up to the fifth fret on the first string before going to the g7 because that's quite a nice walk down if you're up on the fifth to the third into the c so it might be this train is bound for glory, this train, this train is bound for glory, this train here, this train is bound for glory, and I'm riding with the rush in the hallway. Can you hear that walk down? So that's quite a common thing. Um, I mean, this, this cycle of uh, chords and notes is really, really similar to loads of tunes. So you could do like New River Train like this as well. Um, riding on a New River Train. I don't know why they're all about trains. Um, but that's got that same like it's the same, it's the same old train, train that brought me here, it's gone, carry me away again. It's, it's the same sort of sequence, and in that I would go fifth, third, into the C. It's always a nice walk down that. So from your D, just you could, you could just move that ring finger up to the fifth. Then you're going down to your third and then you're going into your C, okay? So that's something you can play around with a little bit as well. Um, you can, um, I don't know how familiar you are yet with kind of uh, where the useful notes are on the fretboard in terms of when you're in open G. And this tune is obviously, I'm playing it in G, I would usually play this in A, I'd capo it um, to raise it for my voice. Um, but, you know, if you're playing in G, you, you know, you've got your open tune in, your second fret, your fifth fret, your ninth fret, that's a really handy one on that first string. Uh, up to your twelfth fret gives you your your whole octave okay so you're going right up to the 12th and sort of starting again so as if the you know the nut has moved here you're sort of starting again on your 12th fret um and then you know all those sort of major notes that are, are along they're 
we're all going to be really Hey folks, sorry there'll be a bit of a blip there, uh, my phone ran out of space on me so um, I've just freed up some more, hopefully it will last till the end. Um, so I'll work out how to put these bits together. Uh, so sorry, I was explaining those useful notes along the G scale. Um, so what I was going to say is that you can, um, you know, you can do your little kind of solo bits um, to do something a bit different up and down the neck, knowing those useful notes. So, you know, you don't always have to stick with the exact melody. As long as you're sticking with the chord structures and the sort of structure of the tune is the same, you know, you can play around with it a little bit if you wanted to do a kind of different little instrumental bit in the middle. Um, so you might slide on the, the second to the fifth. <laughs> You know, because those notes are all going to work together. The second, the fifth, and the ninth fret on that first string. Um, you know, so you could do something like. Uh, and then go to D. Then you see. You could put a little um, rather than going to the seventh that time you could just do it on that first string so we're emphasizing all the notes along the first string back to D yeah so it's not exactly the melody but it's following that exact same structure slides to finish it off you know it's just playing around with it a little bit um you've got the actual melody if you go right up to the 12th fret so like we talked about it's like starting again when you get to the 12th fret obviously you've not got much space up here um i particularly haven't got much space because this banjo's got a frailing scoop um if you can see there it's got like a um those those kind of frets are missing it's kind of scooped out um i have to say i never really bother using it uh, but a lot of players um old timey players do use that frailing scoop to get a different sound because it sounds different there than it does kind of right over the the head up here so anyway um that's by the by the the 12th fret you're kind of starting again on the melody um so you could um so you could go right up you could slide into it from wherever you want slide to the 12th and then on the 14th you could put like a little extra note in then back to the 9th sounds nice um, this string is bound for a string and then you could do that slide again, second to fifth. You could do that again if you want, repeat it, but then go back up to the twelfth. Do a couple of pull-offs. And then remember you've got a D here, your bar chord D, which sounds nice if we're up this end of the neck. Uh, so you could do your bar chord and then you could do another pull-off um, two frets along. So again, going back to that ninth on the first string sorry I'm trying to move my fingers out of the way so you can see but that's going to mute it um, so you're doing a, a bar and maybe a pull off um, and then you know you can go back up to your 12th you can do a bar across your 12th fret which gives you your full G chord at the 12th um, that's up to you I'm just doing the sort of first string I'm not bothering barring it but, um, but I could bar it um, and then remember we've got the G7 as part of the sort of um, walk down into the C. Now we were playing it up there, but if we're up this end of the neck, then we're holding that string first string down at the 12th. It means three frets along is going to give you the seventh, just like three frets along from the start up here gives you the G7. If you were in a bar chord G there, three frets along is going to give you that seventh again so we're really high up the neck now um but you could do your seventh there 
and then you've got your bar chord C at the fifth so you could go there and then again seventh note we were putting the seventh in when we were up at that uh, other end whereas we can reach three one two three along and that's going to give you the seventh note of your C so a little bit tricky you've got to like reach that little finger over a little bit um, but you've got your C and then reach it over for the seventh so you could do something like um, uh, da, 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 da. Kind of coming up the neck and that sounds really nice um, I think that's what I did in the little intro um, so play around with that a little bit coming right up to this G either barring it fully or you can get away with cheating and just um, fretting that first note uh, first string sorry and then reaching that little finger to give you this uh, to give you the seventh when you're in your C you're gonna have to bar it you can't cheat because obviously if you only hold one string you're going to stay in open G, you're not going to be in your C chord. So you've got to bar it when you go to the C to do your seven. So that is slightly more awkward because you've got to keep that finger down and then reach across to the seventh there. But it sounds pretty cool. Um, you could even do something like that on a singing part. So like I said, you don't always want to kind of be playing fiddly stuff while you're singing. Um, and you might not want to sing at all. Um, which is totally understandable. That's what I was like when I first started to play. Um, but uh, once I got over that, it was the best thing I ever did. Because singing along um, just trains your ear so much. I know I've said it before in these tutorials, but it's so, so true. Um, and also it's fun, you know, that's the point of this. Um, so, you know, start singing along. And if you're singing, you might decide to do more like um, a kind of backup. So rather than putting in all these notes that we've been doing and slides and stuff, you might just play those chords quite um, choppy. Um, so, um, you know, you can kind of, what they call like vamp, vamping, I think, um, uh, or chopping or whatever. And you do that a bit if you're backing up other uh, instruments while they're doing their instrumental. So a fiddle might be going crazy while you kind of just kind of just do your chords. And of course, like bar chords are great for that. So you could do a verse where you're literally going, um, like, this train is bound for glory, this train. This train is bound for glory, this train. This train is bound for glory. Right among the rash and the holy. This train is bound for glory, this train. You know, and just use your bar chords to do a kind of backup for when you're singing. And also what's nice when you do something like that is if you've been playing quite, you know, um, fiddly, fast, uh, fancy things, it's nice to drop it out and kind of just have that total contrast of going to going to a chop. You've got your G there as well, your F, you know, your sort of F chord moved up to the to the G, two frets along. So you could you could sort of uh, this train is bound for this train. This train is bound for this train. Oh this train to sort of more of an open G for the lower bit at the end. So you've got loads of options there. Um, there's the bluesy option, which I haven't demonstrated, but that's really cool. So again, in open G, across this third fret, you've got the blues scale, which I haven't really covered in any tutorials as of yet, but why not? Let's throw it in now. Um, so if you fret your bass string or your second one, and then let go. You get a really kind of bluesy sound. Not so much on the second string, that's throwing it out the scale, so don't worry too much about your second string. But your first, your third, and your fourth, all along that third fret, are going to give you some really cool blues notes. So again, having fun with this, not being too technical um, about playing the exact melody, play a bluesy sounding version of it. So if I if I use that um, third fret on the bass string, how cool 
does that sound? So I'm kind of going there. What am I doing? So I'm fretting it at the third, the bass, but then I'm going up to the open next string. Actually, I'm not. I'm just that just comes on the strum. Sorry, I'm just trying to work out what I do so I can kind of vaguely tell you. Um, so fretting the bass on the third string and then I sort of let it go for the strum and then you can fret it on the um, uh, sorry yeah bass on the third fret and then the third string on the third fret as well and then letting it go and then a nice little slide up to the fifth do it's not really a hammer on I'm fretting it while I strike it and then I'm letting go for the strum and then to D obviously this time definitely do a power D don't put that F sharp in just keep that um, two finger D and then you can reach your ring finger and instead of doing the normal fourth string third uh, sorry fourth fret Keep getting my frets and strings muddled up. Third string, fourth fret, pull off. Do that pull off if you can, again on that third fret. So it's a bit awkward where you're holding your two finger D, you're gonna bring your ring finger across and again on that third fret, you're gonna pull off that um, second string. Now, sorry, third string. Blech! Getting mixed up tonight. Third string, but that'll give you that bluesy sound because if you're in that power D, and you do a little extra note there, fret it and pull it off, sounds kind of groovy. So if you've been in that kind of blues zone for your G, and then again, and then you're going to go to your C, focus on that bass, keep it nice and bassy. Da, da, da. Emphasize that seven. Do the the little finger across to the third string. Because that fits really nice. And then back to your third fret again on the bass. Da, 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 da. And then you sort of D. Da, da, da. You know, and then just finish it on your open third string. So that would give you a really cool bluesy. Da, 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 da. sounds really groovy doesn't it so play around with it you know do things like that and that's kind of what I want you to just uh, get out of this style is the fact that you can have loads of fun with it and um, it does not have to be following an exact tab and doing exact notes if that's your thing cool you know do that for some for some tunes and stuff but really try and kind of sing along um you know just just go just let loose with it a little bit you know and just put stuff in where it feels like it'd sound cool it doesn't have to be the exact note but if it sounds cool put it in you know so you've got loads of options there like i say you might just sing a verse this train is bound for in this train this train is bound for in this train oh yeah this train is bound for it and the whole of this train is bound for this train Oh, this train is leaving in the morning, this train. 
all those little things out um and uh yeah let me know if you get on if you want and um, post a little video of yourself doing it in the i don't know if you can do that in the discussion thing i'm still getting used to these whole youtube systems um but i hope that gives you something to uh, have fun with and play around with um one way you can help me out i'm doing these lessons for free um because i really wanted to pay it forward um i learned from youtube uh, particularly patrick costello look him up um uh, if you can but um i was so grateful to people like him who'd put stuff up for free um because it's just so helpful um when you're a poor musician and can't afford stuff um and uh you know and you can just re-watch the videos over and over while you while you're trying to get it and trying to learn um but one way you can help me out um that doesn't actually cost anything is please follow my other youtube channel which is the banjo gen one my main one for my singer songwriter stuff um and i've also got obviously facebook page and instagram and spotify and all of that so if you can kind of give me a like and a follow on all those platforms um that goes a long way for independent artists and um, the more you know that we can build up exposure like that uh, the better really um if any of you are feeling super kind and generous um, I do have a PayPal link which I will put in the description of the video um, but there is absolutely no obligation at all and um, that's just you know if uh, if you're feeling a little bit flush and generous and you want to uh, chuck us a few quid and um, that's that's really cool it will go towards me getting a better phone because uh, this one buzzes and runs out of space in two seconds so um, I'm aware it might run out on me any moment now <laughs> watching the countdown um so i'm gonna get a new phone very shortly and hopefully do some better quality videos with it um but anyway uh you don't have to do any of that um i just hope that you're having fun and i hope that you get some enjoyment out of the banjo and uh drop me a line and let me know how you're getting on all right cheers guys i'll see you next time bye